Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of worship on the Lord's Day. It is the day that God has made. We're here to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Frank Chuslock. I want to welcome you to Fourth Avenue United Methodist Church. It is a day of great rejoicing and celebration. If you're our guest this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to you, and especially those of you who are here to celebrate the sacrament of baptism with us. Let's take a moment and stand and greet one another, shall we? We do have several visitors with us this morning. Uh, among them, I would like to give a special welcome to uh, Reverend Cynthia Williams. She's our district superintendent. She's with us this morning. Cynthia, would you stand right where you are? And would you welcome Cynthia? <laughs> You'll have the opportunity to visit with her after the service during our coffee hour, and she'll be meeting with our staff parish relations committee at 1030. And now you have an announcement you'd like to share. Kelly Landsberg has an announcement. Quick and enthusiastic, right? Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> Who's hungry for a Vikings so, victory? <laughs> <laughs> ah, excellent. Did excellent. you think I was going to say soup? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm talking about that too. So we have a meeting today at 1030 downstairs in Fellowship Hall for anyone who wants to give some input or find out what's going on about our soup luncheons that are going to be starting on February 16th. Um, we are going to be having a clean up the kitchen day, things like that will keep you um, informed about all of that. But if you have any questions, please see Chris Schiffer or myself and um, we'd be glad to put you to work. Great, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Let us stand and sing our praises to God. Oh! 
in the light of his love to proclaim among the faithful that God is our light and our salvation and to declare our allegiance to God's kingdom who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yet we also recognize that so often we cling to the darkness and turn away from God and sin. And so at the beginning of this celebration, we invite God to shine the light of his love into our hearts, to confess our sin and seek God's mercy and his forgiveness. Let us pray. God, we confess that we are sinners, that we fall short of your glorious ideal. We rebel against your love and we resist your call. Come with your cleansing mercy. Free us and forgive us so that we can live a new life. God, our Father, your Son, Jesus, is the light of the world. Grant that we, your people, illumined by the word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory and give us grace to answer readily his call to serve, that he may be known and worshipped and obeyed everywhere upon the earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And all God's people say, Amen. Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, 
a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they decided to go without food and wear sackcloth to show their sorrow. When God saw that they had put a stop to their evil ways, he had mercy on them and didn't carry out the destruction he had threatened. Here ends the first lesson. I'd like to call the children now to share a few moments with me. I'm gonna change the order of things just a little bit. If the children would come, Come on up here. Jonah? You know nothing about Jonah? Oh, does anybody know about Jonah? Anything? Well, Jonah was the one swallowed by a fish. You ever heard that story before? Well, I'm going to retell the story using my Rhine Bible here. And uh, let's get in a little rap beat here as we, as we uh, tell the story. This is called Jonah Goes to Nineveh. God said to Jonah, I have a little task. Get up and go to Nineveh and do what I ask. The people there are wicked, so tell them to obey. But Jonah got on board a ship and sailed the other way. Uh-oh, Jonah, you better go to Nineveh. Say that with me. Uh-oh, Jonah, you better go to Nineveh. God sent a windstorm to shake up the boat. The frightened sailors worried that it wouldn't stay afloat. Jonah had been sleeping, but he heard the captain cry, Everybody pray or we're all going to die. Uh-oh, Jonah. You should have gone to Nineveh. Say that with me. Uh-oh, Jonah. You should have gone to Nineveh. Jonah told the sailors, It's all because of me. I'm sure the wind will stop if you throw me in the sea. They didn't want to do it, but the wind howled and roared, so they picked up Jonah and threw him overboard. Uh-oh, Jonah, you should have gone to Nineveh. Say that with me. Uh-oh, Jonah, you should have gone to Nineveh. When Jonah hit the water, the wind stopped blowing, the boat stopped lurching, and the waves stopped rolling. But God prepared a fish, and as soon as it arrived, it opened up its mouth and swallowed Jonah alive. Uh-oh, Jonah, you should have gone to Nineveh. Say with me, uh-oh, Jonah, you should have gone to Nineveh. Down went Jonah with a great big swish. He landed at the bottom in the belly of a fish. For three days and three nights he stayed that way. Then he promised for then he prayed for help and promised to obey. Say that with me. Say that's better, Jonah. It's time to go to Nineveh. Say that with me. That's better, Jonah. It's time to go to Nineveh. Jonah was relieved when he saw what God had planned. The fish threw him up and tossed him on the land. God said to Jonah, I want them to repent, so go preach to Nineveh. And this time, Jonah went. That's good, Jonah. I'm glad you went to Nineveh. Say that. That's good, Jonah. I'm glad you went to Nineveh. There's the story. So God's at work in our lives, calling us to do his work. And if we turn away from him, he doesn't stop trying to get our attention. And eventually, when we turn around, he'll work powerfully in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, 
Help us to get your message quickly, to not turn away when you call like you did to Jonah, but help us to turn quickly to you and let you lead us so that you can do the great work you want to do in this world through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for sharing these moments with me. You're going to go off to Sunday school, and we'll see you later on in the service. by Herod Antipas. Jesus went to Galilee to preach God's good news. At last the time has come, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Turn from your sins and believe this good news. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew fishing with a net, for they were commercial fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Come, be my disciples, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and went with him. A little farther up on the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in the boat mending their nets. He called them too, and immediately they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. Here ends the reading of the gospel. You may be seated. Would you reach into your bulletin again? There's a couple of things I want you to ask you to take out of there. One is the connect card. Turn it off over the back where you'll have some ways to uh, respond to this morning's message. The other thing I want you to take out is the white insert uh, that has some color print on it. I believe at the top of it says, let's go ice fishing on it. If you would take that out, and then if you would secure a pencil in the pews or a pen or some other writing instrument you brought with you, because I'm going to ask you to do something uh, very practical this morning to prepare to put into practice what I'm seeking to teach you. How are we doing back there in the sound room? Are you ready for what I've got in store? Wonderful. We have a miracle back in the sound room. That's great. Good to hear. I can see that many of you got the memo that I sent out late this week with the emails to wear your Vikings purple in celebration of the Vikings today. The last Vikings uh, Sunday's Vikings victory will long live in the hearts of the Minnesota faithful and has energized the fan base all week. Do you not find yourself talking about the Vikings constantly this week and getting energized and excited about this afternoon's game? The pregame starts, I think, at 3 o'clock, and, and the game starts at, what, 6.30 or 5.30? 5.30, that's the East Coast, 5.30 here. And you can hardly wait for that game to get underway, that NFC championship game with Philadelphia. Let's take a few moments this morning to relive last Sunday's improbable, seemingly impossible finish. Take a look. We ready for it? Click. There we go. Crank it up. Steps into it. Passes. <laughs> Now, Joe Buck is quite an announcer, but even Joe Buck could not capture the real excitement of the Minnesota fan base and that glorious finish, like the voice of Vikings radio announcer, Paul Allen. Listen to his glorious call. We have to trick the system here. Here it 
Here it goes. A run on a bounce, we're off the back of the end zone again. Wow, just a big, big mistake. Uh, you just gotta be able to, you gotta take advantage of when they do that kind of stuff. 10 seconds to go, 24, 23 seconds. Vikings at the road, 39, it's third down. Three receivers right, field and left. Marshawn Lattimore, 12 yards from Adam. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side. Oh my God, stay the back up. Oh my God. Hated to hear it end. <laughs> Have you been reliving, reliving that moment through the internet or for TV and the announcements and the and the, uh, the the television set? My goodness, what an incredible moment! And I have found myself engaging in conversation with complete strangers this week over that that incredible game. And immediately, people begin to smile. People begin to open up. And, and immediately a connection is being made when we talk about the incredible win uh, for the Vikings last Sunday and the one we anticipate in Philadelphia this afternoon. And then, and then following the game before a national audience, Vikings quarterback Case Keenum called, uh, called the special game winning touchdown special and described it this way. But in that moment, when the spotlight hit, and he was asked to reflect on the moment that it happened, just there, that incredible career-altering moment, he said, I think it's the third best moment of my life, behind giving my life to Jesus Christ and marrying my wife. The question I have for you is this. When the spotlight falls on you, Will you be ready to make a testimony for the Lord? When that moment comes, and it often comes unexpected, when somebody opens up to you, they're struggling with a problem, they're, they're wondering where is God, will you be ready to share your story of faith, to share what you have discovered about the faithfulness of God and the life-changing grace of Jesus Christ? In Mark's Gospel this morning, Jesus engages his disciples in taking up their game to a new level. That's what we want the Vikings to do, right? We want to take their game up a new level. And I believe that God wants to take our game of faith up another level this year. One day as Jesus was walking along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew fishing with a net, for they were commercial fishermen. Jesus called out to them, come, be my disciples, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once, at once they left and went with him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat mending their nets. He called them too, and immediately they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with him. When you stop and really think about it, Jesus was promising these two fishermen quite something quite special. He said, in effect, if you will come and follow me, I'll promote you to a next level in your work in my kingdom. You've been fishing for fish, and you know how to do that really, really well. You've been at it for a long time. But I want to promote you to something more important, something deeper, more earth-shaking, more life-changing. I want to help you fish for people. And if you'll come and follow me, I'll give you the equipment that you need. I'll teach you everything that you need to know. And so you can fish for people and bring people to me that they might share in God's kingdom. Remember that little song that we used to sing? 
as kids. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. When I sang that song as a little child, I knew that that song wasn't just about Andrew and Peter, James and John. I knew that God was inviting me to join him in doing this incredible work. That God was calling me to shift from my business of, of feeding, my, feeding my face to feeding the souls of other people. I understood that Jesus was calling me and us to a higher level of living. And I know that you feel that too. And that's a wonderful, frankly, a wonderful calling that we have from God. And God is calling us to partner with him in sharing the good news, the life-changing news of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. To reach new people for him. I strongly believe that Jesus is calling you and me to up our game, to becoming those who not only feed on Jesus' grace, but help others to come to feed on Jesus' grace. And if we'll come to him, Jesus will promise us, will, will teach us how to go on to the next level. And doing so will invigorate our faith and fill us with a holy exhilaration. <coughs> so today I'm making an announcement. Today I'm making an announcement. I am announcing Faribault Fourth Avenue United Methodist Church February fishing extravaganza. Faribault, 4th Avenue, February fishing extravaganza. I'm going to invite you to break the ice and go ice fishing with me. I am declaring, next slide if you would, I am declaring that next, that Sunday, February 11th, 21 days from today, will be an invite a friend Sunday here at 4th Avenue. On that day, we will be planning an amazing, inspiring, extra special worship celebration. It's the Sunday before Lent, and I'm going to begin a series of messages, six weeks, in which we're going to unpack the meaning of the Lord's Prayer. Many people know the Lord's Prayer very, very well. Perhaps it's the only prayer that they know. And that series of messages is going to help us to get inside what Jesus is teaching us and how God can release his answers to prayer as we learn to fruitfully and faithfully prayer the, pray the prayer. I believe that this will have wide appeal. If you'll bring people on February 11th, perhaps we can convince them to stay with us for the season of Lent as we unfold the great Lord's Prayer. I'm inviting you to take up with Jesus' call with greater intentionality and ask him, to really ask him, to equip us to go fishing. Let me invite you now to take out that, that uh, one of those inserts, the, the paper insert. Here's a picture of it. Yeah, take out the, fi take the fishing challenge. We're gonna talk just briefly about what's, what's the information there. We're gonna talk about some simple steps to get ready. The first step to get ready is to pray for a desire to share the good news. Some of us would be honest with ourselves that the, the flame has gone out, the passion about Jesus has waned, we need a fresh experience of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives, and if we will pray earnestly for that, if we'll ask God to give us a love for him, give us a passion for souls, he will be faithful and answer that prayer. So pray for a desire, because without desire, we won't be very effective. Secondly, pray that God would give the, you the names of three persons, three special people that you can befriend during this period of time. I want you to make a list of people that you know that, you, that need to grow closer to Christ whose faith has waned, or perhaps they've never had faith in our Lord. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe they're in the midst of a transition. Somebody who needs the love of God in a special way. And each day I'm going to ask you to take time to pray for them. 
Let your heart break for them. Pray earnestly that God would move through you and through other means to bring that person closer to God. The third thing, the third step, back to them, is I want you to pray daily for everyone on your list. We talked about that a moment. Put it on your refrigerator, put it in your bathroom, put it in your Bible, somewhere where you go every day, and allow that list to remind you to pray for these special people. The next step. I want to ask you to, break, to um, lift up your game a little bit more in your befriending of people, especially these people. I don't want you to be phony. I want you to be who you are. But I want you to be more intentional with them during this period of time. I want you to make phone calls to them. I want you to send them emails. I want you, I want you to text them. I want you to invite them to spend some time with you. And I want you to pray through that time and ask God to show you how to love them in an unmistakable way. And then, when the time is right, invite them to be your guests for our Invite a Friend to Church Sunday on February 11th. Now you might find that this exercise begins to get you moving in the right direction. I hope that it will. And maybe you won't feel ready to ask them on February 11th. We'll do it some other time. But let this process begin to stir in you. It'll be simple like this. You talk to your, your friend, you've been uh, developing that relationship with them, and you say to them, you know, I love my church, and my faith means everything to me. And on Sunday, February 11th, would you, you would honor me if you would be my guest at my church for an invite a friend Sunday. How would you like to go with me? Simple. Everyone. Everyone can be in the <coughs> Everyone. I heard a story this week, an incredible story from a previous era about a woman who was uh, who was not incredibly gifted. You know, there are people that are that are incredibly out of the world gifted, and other people who are not so gifted. And she was joining a church, and her pastor asked her what she was going to do for the kingdom of God. And she very sheepishly said, "You know, my work schedule is so demanding; I won't be able to attend many services." And he pursued and said, yes, but what are you going to do to build up the kingdom of God? She said, I'm going to take the paper, the newspaper with me to bed. And he said, what? Taking the newspaper to bed? Yes, she said. I'm going to start by going to the death set, the obituaries. And I'm going to read the obituaries and I'm going to pray for the souls of those who have lost their life. And I'm going to pray God's comfort upon those who have lost a loved one. And then I'm going to go to the section where there's a new baby, and I'm going to pray for the well-being of that baby and welcoming them into God's world. And I'm going to pray that God would give the strength to these parents to raise their children. And third, I'm going to go to the celebration of the wedding section, and I'm going to pray for every one of those newly married couples and pray that their love for each other would be faithful and true. Simple faithfulness. God calls us to simple faithfulness. And I want to say to you this. Here are the next steps that I want you to consider. I will seek God's power. Turn to your... your um, your connect card on the back, it says, I will seek God's power to overcome my fear and my resistance in sharing my faith. If you want to ask God to give you power to overcome your, fi your fear and resistance to sharing your faith, check that box. Then you might ask God to show me, what is my way, what is my unique way of sharing the good news with others so that I can fish for people? God, show me my way, not, not Pastor Greg's way, not somebody else's way, but what is my way that you want me to do this? And then I want to ask you to take the February fishing challenge. The February fishing challenge of, of growing in our relationships with others and getting to the place where you can invite them to our service on February 11th. 
And what I want to say to you in closing this morning, it's not too late. It's not too late to embrace Jesus' call to fish for people. Miracles happen every day. Who would have expected last Sunday to happen the way it did? I mean, that was a Minneapolis miracle, if there ever was one. Look at her. Case in point, 99-year-old Millie Wall. You know Millie? Great Vikings fan across many, many years. And her goals for 2018, she's 99 years old. It's going to be the best year ever yet. She's checked off on her list, first playoff game. She, she's there last Sunday. She wants to turn 100 years old. That's happening later on in the summer. And then she says, I want to watch the Vikings win a Super Bowl. Well, here's the next picture. Roger Goodell, president of the NFL, bringing her tickets to that Super Bowl. Wouldn't it be incredible? if the Minnesota Vikings were playing in their own stadium on Super Bowl Sunday. Wow. Go to the next slide, if you would. Get that in your mind. Super Bowl 52 in Minneapolis. We want to see our team there. For several months, in closing, we've been asking God to break through into our lives and into our church. I believe that God is answering that prayer. And this morning's invitation, this morning's challenge is part of that invitation to break through in our Christian journey. We pray for a Minneapolis miracle two weeks from today by beginning to watch and cheer for the beloved team today. I invite you to join me in praying for a ministry miracle in the 4th Avenue Church, a missionary miracle in the 4th Avenue Church, a great move of God miracle in the 4th Avenue Church and in each one of our lives. Let's break through the ice and go fishing. Let us pray. Oh God, these are challenging words challenging words, and you want to take us to another level in our faith and in the practice of that faith. We pray earnestly, Lord, that you would break through the ice in our own faith and in our relationships with others. Teach us to fish for people so that people may come to know the love and grace of God. And we may know the thrill and exhilaration of being a partner with you in bringing people to you. Help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen.
you may be seated. It is our joy this morning to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. You'll find the liturgy for baptism, another one of the inserts in your bulletin. We'll also guide you in the celebration on the screen. I'd like to invite the family and the candidate for baptism to come now. And godparents. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, today it is our joy to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is God's gift to us, a sacrament of God's grace, a means by which we are adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God and made members of Christ's body, the Church. We are included in God's mighty acts of salvation throughout history, and through the baptismal waters poured over us, the Holy Spirit immerses us with all of God's gifts from the streams of God's saving power and generous love, cleansing us from sin, calling for new, new birth and newness of life and our maturing in faith. All this is a gift from a generous God. We celebrate the sacrament of baptism this morning for Wyatt Lee Osmondson son of Jesse and Ashley. Dustin and Heather Hale serve as godparents. Sister Clara is here to be a witness. I ask you now, in the presence of God and these people, do you reject evil? If so, respond, I do. Do you turn from sin and embrace God by faith? If so, respond, I do. Do you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and promise to love and serve him forever? If so, respond, I do. I do. Will you nurture Wyatt's faith in the Lord Jesus by ordering the life of your family so as to keep your son and your daughter under the church's worship, life, and fellowship until by the Spirit's power he confess Christ as Savior and Lord openly? If so, respond, we will. Dustin and Heather, you've been prayerfully chosen to serve as baptismal sponsors for Wyatt. Will you support his parents in raising him as one of Christ's disciples? If so, respond, we will. I invite the people of God to stand. Next slide. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Wyatt and his family with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Did I forget to put that up there? Sorry about that. Let us unite our voices to confess our faith singing, I believe in Jesus.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land in which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and bless this gift of water and the one who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may come to share in your final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. Quietly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Will you join me in laying a hand on, come in here? The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water of the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. This is our new brother in the Lord, Wyatt Lee. Will you join me as we uh, sing his welcome song?
is almost over. The <laughs> candle from which we light reminds us of the power, the light of God's, of Jesus' death and resurrection. Quietly, let your light so shine before others. Don't blow it out. <laughs> They may see your good works and give glory to your Father, who is in heaven. We have some gifts for you from the congregation. We have the baptismal certificate. I'll give that to Dustin. And then this bag of special gifts, a bear and a, um, a Bible. To another Bible to add to your collection of Bibles. And here's a blanket. Gifts from the congregation. <laughs> Let's express our joy. <laughs> Let us pray this blessing. May the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We, we rejoice one more time as they return to their seats. Give them a clap. <laughs> Cynthia, if you'd like to say a word, we're going to give you a moment right now. I told Cynthia she has an enthusiastic two minutes to share with you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is so wonderful to be here. Uh, as I was driving here this morning, I got two minutes to so talk fast. Um, you know, I meet here, you are so gracious that I meet with clergy in this space uh, throughout the year. And this summer, when I entered into the building, I noticed that there was something different. And I couldn't quite name what it was, except that there was just this lightness of the spirit, and spaces have energy. And the energy in the space, although it was somewhat empty, it was just beautiful. And as I was meeting with Pastor Greg, and he started to share with me about the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative, and then I was like, oh, there is something that God is doing in this place, and I know that prayer is a part of it. And so that lightness that I experienced, that God is on the move in this place, and I am so overjoyed. I am so overjoyed that uh, even at the beginning of Pastor Greg's uh, tenure here, that he is beginning by leading you in prayer because I know God, any great move of God begins first with prayer. And so I am so excited about that, and I'm excited that out of that prayer, you've entered into this season of yes, right? Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Minnesota Conference to thank you. Thank you for being a praying congregation. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for, because on the other side of that yes, it means you are positioning yourself to say yes, God, we will go where you, where you will lead us. We will fish because you're calling us to fish. We will reach because you're calling us to reach and we will be welcoming because you have called us to open ourselves up to God in new ways. And so I simply want to thank you for the place and the role you were playing in helping us as a United Methodist uh, a denomination to grow stronger and deeper in love of God and neighbor, to reach new people and to help heal a broken world. And so I thank you and I am so grateful. Go for it! Yes. That's what I call an enthusiastic two minutes. <laughs> Let us pray. Let us begin with our breakthrough prayer. And also we're mindful that uh, we want to pray for a young man with an Antonio's in critical condition. We want to pray for another man who lost his life yesterday in an, an electrocution here in our town. We're not sure what his name is, but we lift him up before the Lord. 
Together we pray. O oh God, our God, we praise and magnify your name. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. With you, all things are possible. We know that you are with us and for us, and your plans are for our good, for a future and a hope. Break through into our lives and into our church. Stir up afresh our faith. Set our hearts aflame with the fire of your love. Open our eyes to new, fresh possibilities and fill us anew with the power of your spirit. Usher us into a new season of faithfulness and fruitfulness for your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our prayer. Lord, as we pray, we lift up those who are in need of your help. We pray that you would heal those who are broken in mind and body and spirit. Seek the lost. Feed the hungry. Free the addicted. Open doors to the unemployed. Lift up the despairing. Draw near to the lonely. And use us. Comfort those who are grieving especially for our brother Bob Hammer upon the death of his daughter, for our brother Donald Kleberger on the death of his mother. Be with the family of our sister Gail Reinecke. Touch with your healing mercies, Tony. And Lord, surround with your comfort the family of the young man who died by electrocution. electrocution. Lord, we pray that your strong and loving arms would hold his soul. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior, and you've called us, and we, are, we have said yes to you. Listen to the prayers of your faithful people. May we who have received the gift of salvation fulfill your calling to build up your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
I'm not much of a dancer. But when the music get in, gets inside of me, I don't care what anybody thinks, and I just do it what feels natural to me. You might feel the same way about evangelization. You don't know how to do it. But when the spirit of the risen Jesus gets inside of you, and you let him move you, you'll be amazed at what God does in, in and through your life. Let's dance. Let us go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.